It's good to take time out to reflect on where you've come from, on where you're going, and what is of value in life. During my travels, I learned a lot from the time I spent in the community of Weston, which thrived in the days of the gold rush. But some thought that the real gold was in the service industry, and that you could sustain a better living as a merchant than from the amounts of gold that were pulled from any creek. News of a strike in Weston traveled afar. The little community attracted a lot of Chinese with hopes of making a fortune. Before long, though, there was a clash of cultures, and many of the Chinese were isolated and lived on the edge of town, where they struggled to survive and to be accepted in the community. There were some with deep prejudices who would never accept any other culture than their own. <laughs> Wherever trouble was, you could usually find Tully. Oi! Flat face! <laughs> hey, Tully, watch this. And wherever Tully was, you'd find Biffo <laughs> and Pig. Bullseye. And Annie. When you're young, and you're poor. It's easy to blame other people for your problems. Hey, listen, Chinese music. <laughs> to Tully and his gang, the blame started and ended at Lao Fang's front door. Well, well, look what we got here. Kai. Told you they came in smaller sizes. <laughs> Rice. Rice is what you throw at a wedding. Here comes the bride. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kai wants to be the ball. Yeah. Tully, be careful. <clears throat> there, friend. Right this way, folks. A basket full of china. Going cheap. Train. Yeah. Tully. Come on, Annie. Let's see if we can find you an orange. I've found that usually humor can diffuse a difficult situation. But that day, I wasn't quite sure if my strategy uh. worked. You know, I've been thinking. We should get into the protection game. Protecting what, Tull? Protecting people. From us. That chinky Chinaman could be my first customer. <laughs> you mean he pays us not to clubber him? Catching on, Biffo. That sounds like a dirty racket. What's it to you, friend? Nothing. I just don't like seeing people get hurt. You want to stay healthy, mate? Learn to mind your own business. Tully, he's got a point. We have fun, don't we? Why spoil things? I want your opinion. I'll ask for it. Tully... Shut up! Hey! I thought I told you to pull your head in. Uh, or what? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> or we'll knock your block off. Are you coming or what?
You must be hungry, Grandfather. I've gone longer than this without food. But m Mother will have hot soup. I must stay here tonight. But Grandfather... Go now. And be careful. Lao Fang didn't want to be intimidated. But who could blame him with Tully's new business enterprise of protection? What's the matter, lovely? Cat got your tongue? Tully? Yeah? Biffo didn't hit him too hard, did he? Will you stop worrying about that bum? Who is he anyway? Forget him. You gonna eat that orange or not? Just wait, Angel Face. One day you'll have your own orange tree. I'll buy you a whole orchard if you like. So, uh, when were you planning on getting started, Tull? On the chink. First thing in the morning. Up with the lark. We'll pay him a little visit. Soon after being introduced to Tully and his gang, Lao Fang's grandson, Kai, found me. And I decided to try and get a little more understanding of their situation. to realize how hard life must have been for him and his family. People fear what they don't know, and very little was known about Lao Fang's culture. They were distrusted just because they were different. And the others? <sighs> they will return? Yeah, I'm afraid so. <sighs> what will you do? Nothing. Nothing? The tree that stands against the wind will one day break. Some days, it is better to be like the reed. To bend, to bow, but to endure. <sighs> Lo, it's going to get rough. Violence cannot be quailed by violence. Somebody else said that to me once. He was a fairground boxer, not a mark on his face. He spent his time avoiding the blows. And he was successful, this boxer? Yeah. He never lost a fight. There is more than one way to draw the sting out of a scorpion. doing here? I came to see if you're all right. This late? Does Tully know you're here? Of course not. Do you think I'm stupid? Well, I'm fine. You'd better get home before he realizes you're gone. No rush. He's had a couple of drinks. That always puts him out. <laughs> Are you sure you're okay? I'm sorry about what happened. I don't know what gets into him sometimes. Why do you stay with him? You could live your own life if you wanted to. But I'm scared to do that. And besides, I love him. Do you? Well, there are times where he is the sweetest person in the world. But then something happens. <laughs> but I'm working on it. I can change him. I know I can. You deserve better. Have you got a girl? Nah. I've never been in the same place long enough, I suppose. You moving on again soon? Yeah. Well, better go. Would you like me to walk you? No. I don't think it'd be a good idea. Take care. <laughs> A 
Jenny seemed like a reasonable young lady, and I couldn't understand why she would get involved with someone like Tully. For a few days, Tully's dispute with Lao Fang seemed to have quieted down, along with my luck. With seemingly no hope of pulling more gold out of the creek, I decided perhaps it was time to leave town and move on. Jess! Jess! Jess, you must come! It's bad, real bad! Come quick! <laughs> Good old chinky lover. Look, I don't want any trouble and neither do they. Good, we'll carry on then, shall we? Tully, for the love of God, think about what you're doing here. This is Lao's livelihood. You carry on and he's gonna starve. It happens. Walk down Station Road. There's loads starving, just like you and me. Why should he be any different? I think you're missing the point. He is like you and me. He's a human being and he definitely doesn't deserve this. I don't deserve this. I've been living in the cesspool of a town for 18 years. Fighting for food, waking up every morning, getting to the same stinking clothes. I'm moving up, right? I ain't letting no flat-faced chink stop me. Tully's ambitions to get a better lifestyle at the expense of someone else was way out of line. And as always, very few people step forward to put an end to the bullying. There we go, just a couple of nails, Kai. Jess, why are we doing this? Surely, Tully will knock it down when my grandfather refuses to pay him. And what's the alternative, Kai? Do we just let Tully win out? But he will win. My grandfather will not fight them. Yeah, but at least we can show them that we're not easily beaten. Let's get this last one up. So what do we do, Tull? We wait till they're finished. Then we put the boot into it again, yeah? No, boys. I have an idea we may not have to. I have nothing you want. You're a very lucky little Chinaman, because today we're going to give you a second chance to take us up on our kind offer. The answer is still no. Oh, you silly old chick. No, no, Biffo. I can understand that. I mean, if we wreck his shop again, he has Jess and Kai to help him rebuild it. But there are some things, old man, that cannot be replaced. How many grandchildren do you have again? Just the one, is it? Thanks, Kai. Couldn't have done it without you. Lao! The man himself. Tell me, what do you think? Hey, Lao? Very impressive. This will definitely bring in more turnover. Leave us alone, Tully. Oh, I wouldn't dream of touching this work of art. <laughs> you might want to give it a lick of paint before you finish, though. People like to shop in nice places. And more customers means more cut for me. Isn't that right, old man? The boy. You've threatened the boy, haven't you? How low can you get, Tully? As low as I need to. Now you want to finish this job? Old men and children. That's just your style, isn't it? Shut your mouth. Old men, children, and anyone your monkeys get their hands on. You are asking for it. Oh, well, yeah? I bet you wouldn't have the guts to fight your own fights. No? <laughs> Go Tully! Get him, Tully!
out of here! Sorry, Lo. That didn't help matters much. It was good to watch, but it changes nothing. I have no choice. I must pay. As for you, my advice is to leave town. There was no way I'd leave Lao Fang, but I thought Tully would back down, having learned his lesson. But he wasn't about to take defeat so easily. First things first, the place he's rebuilt, I want to gut it. But what about the money? I don't care. I want that place gone. Tully. I've got a job for you, too. Hey, Annie. Thought you'd be gone by now. Yeah, well, something cropped up. But you'll be gone again soon, yeah? Yeah, I'm leaving tomorrow. What's wrong with today? Today? Why waste the rest of today when you could be, oh, ten miles away by tonight? Annie, why are you here? No reason in particular. Just passing. Annie. Look, just forget I came, okay? No, no, wait a sec. It's Tully, isn't it? He's going to make his move tonight. Am I right? <laughs> on the shop or on me? Just, just leave, please. Which? There's no need for you to get hurt. Annie, I need to know. The shop. But he's banking on you being there. Promise me you won't go. Promise. I can't do that. <sighs> Tully had hatred and revenge on his mind. But not only for Lao Fong, I was now a confirmed enemy, about to be set up for a huge fall. Get another one of those. <sighs> well? Yeah, she went. I saw him talking. That's my girl. How do you know she told him? Because, Pea Brain, if she didn't, all she had to do was stay away. Time for showdown. At least Annie had my best interests at heart. And she was starting to realize Tully's ways were wrong and had to be stopped. No sign of pretty boy. Start kicking the place around, he'll turn up. Holly! Gotcha. Can we talk? Sure. What's in your mind? A deal. You leave these people alone, and you can have me for a year. Doing what, exactly? Anything. That's legal. A servant, shoe shiner, delivery boy, food finder, cook, dog's buddy. I have to admit, that's tempting. My own personal manservant. <laughs> but then, I have to ask myself, do I really need a manservant? And well, the answer is no. Uh. Oi! Uh. You want to go too, little boy? Let's do it. Take him inside. I could never understand why most of the townsfolk didn't stand up for Lao Fang. And I slowly began to realize that it was perhaps because he didn't stand up for himself. Mr. Lau! Mr. Lau, you must come! What's the matter, girl? The shop! Kai, Jess, they're in trouble. We must help them. It was like something out of a bad dream. I was angry at Tully, mad at myself for getting into this mess. Ready? But most yeah. of all, I was angry at Lao Fong. It was his shop, but he had caved in and left other people to fight his battles. You boys better clear out. It's gonna get warm in here. <laughs> Tully, what are you thinking? This is 
Murder! Yeah? Are you ready? Tully, no! I don't know. Come on. Help! Help! Somebody! Help! Tully! Help! Tully! 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 Come on! Tully! <coughs> it's stuck. Let's get out of here. Please! <coughs> This is the end, Grandfather. It is said, Kai, to taste new fruit, one must firstly uproot the old tree and plant a new one. Perhaps this was meant to be. With respect, Lo, I don't think you've got a new tree to plant. Something will present itself. How can you be so fatalistic? I mean, look around you. Where's your, your philosophy got you so far? I see destruction, but no death. And life, Jess, is the most precious gift of all. Yeah, well, this may not be over yet. Don't you think you've done enough? Mr. Fong? I'd like to thank you for saving my life. And I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused. We'll have your shop back up and running just as soon as we can. Well, everyone, what are we waiting for? Tully wasn't just grateful. The experience had changed him. And I think Lao Fang's example had a lot to do with that. All Tully knew was violence. Yet his life had been saved by the man he was trying to destroy. A man of peace, who did what he could, when he had to. It's a lesson we could all learn. I certainly learned a lesson from my days in Weston. That there is room for all cultures, and more than one way to stand up for what you believe in. I had my way, and Lao Fong had his way. And it worked. He was accepted not only by Tully, but by the whole community, where his business thrived. Unlike my search for gold. So it was time to move on, and I left more enriched than when I arrived.